Jose, you one cool cat. Now, you know you my dog, but you one jive turkey. Let's go ahead and get this party popping and get things started. Hey, you're going to love this guy. He has built such an incredible range of voices, talents, original characters. You're going to love him. He's a staple at Flappers. You can catch him in Burbank and all through Los Angeles. Please welcome to the stage my friend, Jose Maestas III. I always wish I was as smooth as a really old black man. I do. Everything they say is just is silky smooth, man. I'll give you an example. One of my favorite people in the world, his name is Will. Old school brother. He's the type of man that just makes you feel good about yourself. I see him every day at the gym. I walk in, there he is. <laughs> there he is, my man, Jose. You one tall, dark, sexy <laughs> He's from a different generation. That's the thing. He rarely cusses. You'll rarely hear him cuss. But if he does, he old-timey cusses. You know what I'm talking about? He said that really doesn't mean anything. But 50 years ago, you knew he meant business. Like, he'll use all these animal references that just leaves you confused. He'll be like, Jose, you one cool cat. Now, you know you my dog. But you one jive turkey. My favorite song right now is called, Let's Do It, Let's Do It, Let's Make a Baby. And that's all it says, seven and a half minutes long, Let's Make a Baby. That's how you know old school soul music, it's too literal. Back in the day, the singers would tell you exactly what they wanted to do to you. There was no time for metaphors, life was much more fragile back then. But it's called, Let's Do It, Let's Make a Baby. I was thinking about it, only a brother could get away with saying something like that to a girl, and she'll actually think about it. No one else could say it. You couldn't be Mexican. Go up to a white girl and say that. I guarantee it won't come out the same way. Uh, excuse me? Uh, oye, oye, mami, ¿quieres hacer un bebé? Do you, you want to make a baby or what? No, gringa, why you run away? No corres de mí, why you run so fast? My shoes are too tight. Doesn't come out the same way, yeah? You couldn't be anybody else. You couldn't be an Indian guy trying to do that, right? Imagine how that would sound. Baby, come on, honey, let's make a baby. We're going to do it, huh? I trade five good gold for you, you are my wife, we're going to do it, huh? Doesn't quite come out as smooth, right? No, but I think the reason I like Will so much, I, I love that gentleman so much, is because he reminds me of my dad. My dad's that type of guy, right? He's from that generation. Just everybody gravitates toward him. Towards him. He's uh, <laughs> just everyone's best friend. But the thing is, being from that generation, sometimes he says things that are a little bit politically incorrect. Like, for instance, we go to Asian restaurants and he thinks he has to speak broken English to order for them to understand, right? He doesn't mean any disrespect, but it comes across a little bit racist. Uh, we sit down, he's like, okay, you bring food for us to eat now, okay, USA? Gracias. I'm like, what, Dad? That's so confusing. Uh, I don't want you guys to get me wrong, though. I, I do appreciate who I am, where I come from. Uh, I like being Latino, being sexy, have that Latin heat. We got some, some Ch Chicanos in the house tonight. There you go, there you go, yeah, yeah. I feel like deep down, everybody wants to be a little bit Latino, right? We're just that cool. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger wanted to be Mexican. That's why he hooked up with his maid and had a kid. Ah, see, everyone always forgets there's a little Mexican Arnold running around. Holy <laughs> That kid's half Mexican, half Arnold. Imagine how confusing that childhood must have been. If I'm ever feeling depressed, I just think of Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to learn Spanish to reconnect with his son. It just automatically makes me feel better. Imagine how that introduction will go. <laughs> oh, como estás? Nice to meet you, mijito. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Mira, why are you so flaquito? You're so skinny, yeah? Are you eating enough? You have to eat a lot and get a lot of protein so you go really, really big like your daddy. <laughs> Grande, como tu papa. <laughs> Siéntate, vamos a tomar order. <laughs> Poor kid, that is so confusing, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> But uh, I gotta tell you guys, is there anyone dating out here in the crowd? You guys are just dating? Oh, damn, a bunch of couples out here tonight. No single ladies in the crowd, that's okay. Um, I was gonna say that I've had a difficult time dating my whole life. And that's because I only get hit on by two groups of people. 
Gay guys and cougars. The two most aggressive hunters in the hookup food chain. It's scary, man, because you can't tell, you can't tell a gay guy no, because he always gives you the same response. You don't know unless you try. <laughs> One time as a joke, I just pretended I was gay. He just wasn't my type, right? So he walks up, he's like, oh my God, you're cute. Can I uh, buy you a drink or something? I was like, honey, you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> I only do black guys. <laughs> and he's all, you're lost, bitch. It worked. It worked up until the point his big friend Tyrone came over. He looked like Shaq, but sounded like Barry White. You know what I'm talking about? He rolled his like, who ordered the chocolate thunder? It's <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. Calm down, Count Chocula. Uh, you scared me straight. Uh, rain check on that one, buddy. Woo, that's a little scary. But uh, I got to get out of here. I want to tell you one last story. Uh, there's a lot going on in, uh, in the media and politics. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the border with Mexico, right? Uh, see, the thing is, if you go down to the border and you're from Latin descent, it always scares you a little bit. Because deep down, you never really know for sure. You start questioning yourself. You start asking yourself, am I illegal? Where did this green card come from? Son of a it's expired. You don't quite know if you're here legally or not. You know, they could be lying to you the whole time. So I went down there, down to El Paso to do some shows, and I got stopped at one of these border checkpoints. Holy it was the scariest moment of my life. And it's the way that they interrogate you that makes you think you've done something wrong. You start admitting that you've never even done. <laughs> And I always have this like really honky tonk hit guy come up to the window and I realize that they play a game. They talk to, they refer to the driver by just some random Mexican name. They just happened to guess right when they came to my car. So he walked up, he's like. How, uh, how you doing there, Jose? You, uh, I don't know, you just, uh, you look like a Jose to me. Uh, let me tell you what's gonna happen here, Jose. We are all full, no vacaciones here tonight. You ain't crossing no border. And I, I bet you woke up all enthusiastic, didn't you? <laughs> you sounded like that girl from Frozen. You were singing songs, let it go, let it go. Can't hold me back, gringo. Well, guess what, boy? This is super gringo out here tonight. Until President A. Trump builds that wall, I'm America's last line of defense. <laughs> go ahead and hand me that ID there, boy. Holy your name is Jose. Whew. Bubba, two for two tonight. Got a Jose and a Miguelito. Woo! You owe me a six pack, boy. <laughs> and the thing is, finally, when they gave me a chance to talk, I started speaking with this accent that wasn't there before. <laughs> Just out of fear, I opened my mouth, and all that came, all that came out was like, Oh, no. Siento mucho, señor. Sabe que no sé. Tengo no más peaches. You start admitting to You've never done. Sabe que we're drug dealers. Uh, uh, El Chapo is my cousin. I don't know. Just take us away. Take us away. We're bad hombres. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button at the bottom. You can also follow us on many of your favorite platforms.